Hello everyone. Welcome to the introduction of the DiPi Workshop 2021 online edition. My name is Eleftherios Garifalidis. I'm a professor at Intelligence Systems Engineering of Indiana University. And I'm also the founder of DiPi. But what is DiPi? So DiPi is a software for medical image analysis. It is also a library for the analysis of diffusion MRI data and other structural data sets. If you're using DiPi, please cite our new informatics paper shown here. So DiPi was created to solve a very interesting problem. So although in dead brains, we can see, we can see well the fibers, the large fibers and pathways uh, are shown here, for example, we can see the last, the last tracts of the brain. We can do that only in vivo. So these days, back in 2008, there was a lot of effort to see if we can recreate these pathways in a, like, in a very good way, in a very accurate fashion and approximate as much as closely the anatomical pathways found by neurosurgeons and neuroanatomists using Klinkler dissectomy or other techniques or staining. And the question is, can you do, can you do that really accurately computationally with computational methods? So then MRI provides data sets that can be used. And this was shown very well from Basil's work. But while looking at this, taking data sets from MRI scanners and looking and trying to understand how diffusion MRI works, I realized very quickly that this is a very, very hard problem. So just a simple pipeline requires to take the 4D raw data, then do some voxel reconstruction as shown here. And then after that, you have to combine information along the voxels and build tractographies and tractograms representing um, and approximating the underlying anatomy of the connectivity of the brain. And then you have to, for example, do some tractometry analysis, which requires some segmentations of the tractograms and do also statistical analysis. Nothing of this, none of these problems is, is trivial. Um, and many of these were open and still some of these problems are open until today. So how to resolve, for example, low angles of crossing fibers? How to reduce false positives in tractography? How to segment accurately the bundles of the tractograms? Which metric to use? All these um, hard to solve open problems. So people were claiming that it's gonna be our lab solving this problem and we're gonna have the perfect solution. And I realized that that's not gonna happen. The, the, the problem of reconstructing the pathways of the brain is, is, is harder than people think. And then this is where I created, let me remove these arrows. This is where I created DiPi. And Basically, the idea of DiPi is that it's a free and open source project for computational anatomy in Python. It focuses on diffusion MRI analysis, but also contains algorithms that are generic for, many, for medical imaging. For example, denoising and registration can be used in other techniques, like um, in other modalities, like functional MRI, structural MRI, other types of non-MRI imaging. 
DIPA is an international project which brings together science across labs and countries to share the state-of-the-art code and expertise in the same code base, accelerating scientific research in medical imaging. So that's what DIPA is. It's a, it's a code, -based, code base with algorithms shared by many uh, different research groups. And that, of course, makes users' life easy because they can install one software rather than installing 10,000 software libraries. So this is the first release, 2009, when I was a PhD student uh, at the University of Cambridge. And these were my advisors, Matthew, Matthew Baird and Ian, Ian Nemo Smith, who helped me to start the project. And, uh, and there, were, there, were, there were two contributors to the project. And then uh, Bago, Amir Began, Stefan van der Waal, and Ariel Wokem were, were the first believers uh, in the project. And this, the Bago was, for example, at UCSF. Stefan was in Stellenbosch in South Africa, and Ariel Wokem was in Berkeley. So immediately the project had a diverse nature, and we tried to make it as diverse as possible to bring as many labs uh, in as possible. And very quickly it grew. Um, and now we have a very large user base, more than 120 contributors over 15 countries. Um, and the, the number of people using our library is always increasing. We have now hundreds of thousands of downloads, of unique downloads, and uh, possibly now it's over a million too. So here is the architecture of the software, like in, in a, the grand picture. So DiPi is, has an image processing site, image processing and signal processing site that is using NumPy arrays. And then it has a computational uh, anatomy site which using our own data structures. And it has machine learning algorithms. Some of them are written from scratch in DiPi. Or for others, we may use uh, algorithms from scikit-learn or TensorFlow. And also we write our own optimization schemes or we use libraries such as uh, CVXPy to drive some of the optimization and modeling problems. So the DIPA is a collection of state-of-the-art and well-tested algorithms. We have extent, extensive testing implemented in, in DIPA. And you can do registration, segmentation, modeling, microstructure modeling or other modeling, optimization, uh, tracking. So here is an example pipeline. Uh, here we get some DWI, some diffusion data sets from the scanner. And then we do, we can do, let's say denoising and then maybe motion correction and then registration with a T1 and then reconstruction with DTI or another method like constant solid angle method can do tracking, uh, tractometry. And then in each of these steps, you need to like do the, that analysis, but also visualize and inspect. So all these steps are provided by DiPi. Now I have to explain something here that DiPi is not a pipeline. There are other, it's more like a library of algorithms. There are other, software projects like NiPipe, like QSI Prep, that are dealing with running DiPi together with other software. But we do not do that. So everything in DiPi is written, written from scratch in Python or Cython and provided to the community in one package. Okay. So here, for example, for the synchro, for the signal reconstruction, part of DiPi. Here are, here 
like many of the algorithms that has, have been implemented. So some of these algorithms are implemented by the authors. Um, some of them are implemented by the DiPy contributors. So just for reconstruction, you can see we have many things, free water diffusion tensor imaging, uh, diffusion spectrum imaging, and so on and so on. There are many, many different reconstruction models implemented in DiPy. And that's only in relation to signal reconstruction. In each one of the analysis uh, needs, like for example, denoising, we have multiple methods provided. Tracking, multiple methods provided. So here are some installation instructions. To install DiPy is super easy, especially if you are familiar with scientific Python. Uh, you just go to Anaconda, download the Anaconda that already includes some of the packages like NumPy and scikit-learn and so on. And then you open an Anaconda prompt in Windows or a terminal in Linux or Mac. And then what you do, you just go to the terminal and say pip install, pip install DiPy. And that provides the library with all the basic modeling analysis capabilities. And after that, you go and do pip install Fury to get also the visualization, the 3D visualization capabilities. So the installation is, is, should be trivial. You shouldn't have any problems installing DiPy. Now, if you want to contribute to DiPy, this is slightly, it needs a, a bit more work. You have to clone the project from our GitHub repository and you have to change a bit the way you call uh, pip install if you want to have it installed locally in your folders. So that is, is done by pip install minus minus user minus e dot. All right, so this is only for people who want to contribute to DiPy. Here are some important links. The main website is at dipy.org an interactive chat room that you can ask questions is available in Gitter, DiPy, Gitter.im, DiPy, DiPy. The source code is available in GitHub and the tutorials are available in DiPy.org slash tutorials. Um, now, how to use DiPy? You basically start from going, reading some of the tutorials and then you can either build your own Python scripts for example, you can download one tutorial and do python quickstart.py to run it or run it through IPython. Or you can use a Jupyter Notebook, like a Jupyter Notebook. Every, every tutorial has a Jupyter Notebook version. Jupyter Notebook quickstart.ipython NB. Or you can run our interfaces, our command line interfaces, dipy underscore info minus H, for example, will provide you the help for, a, for, for this command line called dipy underscore info. So we provide both Python scripts, Jupyter notebook scripts, and command line in, interfaces. And we have also a collaboration with BrainLife that provides web-based interfaces, web interfaces. But that will be in the next talk. So next I will specifically talk about the workshop and what you need to know to familiarize yourself with the workshop's websites and the speakers and so on. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.